Hey guys, welcome back to American Nostalgia Garage. Let me uh, paint a little picture for you here. Let's just say you spent all weekend punching the side of an engine block and pulling fingernails and bending them halfway back and bleeding and cursing and throwing wrenches as far as you can, maybe putting a hole in the neighbor's window, uh, maybe kicking the cat a few times, anything like that, you know, regular stuff. Uh, trying to get an engine in your car. Let's say you just did an engine swap and you want to get it running. So, um, I imagine, just like anybody else, uh, as soon as you get your engine in the car, you know, you, you want to spend the next three to six hours messing with it to try to get it to run. Well, no, you don't want that. So, you want it to run right off the bat. I mean, I know I do, because I don't have a lot of time. And I bet you don't either. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you guys uh, a couple of things that I do to all my like carbureted engines that uh, kind of help me get it off the ground nice and easy. And uh, I'm going to share with you uh, some other like little tuning things that I like to do or things that I like to tune after the car is running. So, all right. Well, in order to understand what it is that we're uh, doing here, so that you're not just turning screws and, you know, turning stuff and doing things and uh, breaking your car, ultimately. Um, kind of got to understand what it is that we're doing and how these little circuits and systems and Venturi and all these little pipes and whistles and blow-off valves and flamboozy bars and Johnson rods, all these things have to work. So, a um, little bit of a science lesson. Uh, kind of the job of a fuel system, carburetor to fuel injected, is that it needs to atomize the fuel, which is like turning it into like little droplets. Don't get all sciencey on me here. Um, after it's atomized it, turn it into little fuel droplets. It's got to vaporize it. Now, vaporizing is when it turns into like gas as a an air form, you know, gas. Not like, you know, after you hit the red lobster real hard. Um, you know, the endless Cheddar Bay Biscuits. <sighs> Going Red Lobster later, I think. Uh, anyway, uh, like I said, you need to vaporize the fuel so you turn it into a gas, um, from a uh, liquid to a gas. And then it's, you gotta ho ho um, you gotta homogenize the fuel, which is uh, basically mix that gas that, uh, that you just turned it from liquid to a gas, mix that gas with the air around it, the oxygen around it. So that's homogenizing. So you got to do those couple things. Um, and then you've got a fuel air mixture. And then the idea is once you have a fuel air mixture, you've basically got to get it correct for all the different running, uh, circuits and systems and conditions that you'll be driving in. All right. Well, there's a couple of adjustments you can do. Like I said earlier, before you even start the car. Um, and you kind of need to do these little things because, uh, you know, you need to have a baseline of where the screw is at. I say screw because carburetors are mechanical. So when you're tuning stuff, you're not, uh, you're not doing anything with the keyboard here. You're using this. One of the very first things that you've got to do is right down in here, this screw right here, there's a, it's an idle mixture screw. There is one here. There's one back here, and then there's one on this back corner and this corner. Not every carburetor has that. It is a four-corner idle system. So this carburetor has it. They don't all have that. So first, that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to adjust those. Now, this is going to need a secondary adjustment later, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually turn them all back in from wherever they are, came out of the box. And you're not cranking these in. You're just turning them until you start feeling it bottom out. Once it bottoms out, you're done. Once they're bottomed out, then you're going to turn them an one and one half turns out. So that's a half. That's one full turn. That's one and one half turns out. And you're going to do that with all four. That's a preliminary setup. You're not going to leave it there. I mean, you may leave it there, but for now, that's our preliminary setup. You're going to have to go back to there and, and tune these again later, and I'll show you how to dial those in. The next thing, just a quick setup deal, is going to be the idle speed screw. And that's right here. And what that does is that basically, don't mind that, 
what that does is that screw is going to basically do kind of pull the throttle like this just a tiny bit just enough to increase the idle so this screw is responsible for that we're going to do the same thing with this screw we're going to do one and one half turns out so we're going to turn it all the way out and then i turned it all the way out i don't see the throttle moving at all and then what i'm going to do is i'm, I'm going to turn it until i feel the screw start to have resistance on it then i know it's basically at the point where it's going to move the throttle see that see the throttle move Okay, so right here is the point where it starts getting resistance. I'm going to do one and one half turns. Again, this is a preliminary setup. That adjustment can be messed with basically to make sure that your idle speed is where you want it. What we want when we start this engine is we want the idle speed to be up because the car is not going to really want to run in the beginning um, because the fuel is not going to be right. We're just setting these things up to make sure that it's kind of in the ballpark. So when it starts, it'll actually stay running. Um, once it is actually running, then the idea is to get it dialed in so it'll stay running and it'll run good. But because it's not going to be running great in the beginning, you kind of want the idle speed up so it kind of works as like a band-aid for you. So, All right, this next one is uh, pretty important. It's the uh, float height. So we're going to set that now. And this is a scenario where you want to start with a little and then increase instead of going too far and then coming back. Believe me, it's a lot easier that way. So let's do that now. All right, so what do we want when we want our float height? This right here, that's our sight glass. There's one on each bowl. That's the primary bowl. This is the secondary bowl. So for example, this is kind of what we want. You see that line right there? That's the fuel line. And as I kind of nudge the car, if you, can, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm rocking the car a little bit. As I nudge the car, you can see the fuel. This is kind of like ideal right here, this level, which is just above the very bottom of the glass. Uh, on carburetors that have the, the plugs that come out, what you want is when you pull the plug out, when you rock the car like that, that you get a little bit of fuel sloshing out. Now this is kind of like right in the ballpark without like having to rock the car, you can just immediately see it. Um, so this is right where I like to keep them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate how to do that on the primary, which is a little bit low. Now the float height is important because the float height itself is basically like what is readily available to the carburetor right now. It's like having a fuel tank attached to the carburetor on the front and the back. If it's too low, you'll with a end up with a lean condition and you, you, know, you have problems there. And if it's too high, you end up flooding it. So you have to have a happy medium. So that's why it's important. Now the way that you adjust it is up here. This screw is a needle in a seat. I'll pull it out and I'll show you. So here it is. I pulled it out. What you can see here is this piece moves. And if you could look up here, it closes off when the float height gets too high. The float, say my thumb is the float. As it raises, it closes off the fuel. And when the you need more fuel and the level in the bowl is too low, the fuel uh, drops because the fuel, the float floats on top of the fuel. And when it floats on top of the fuel and it gets low, it drops down, opens up, allows more fuel to flow through here. And when it gets too high, closes it right back off. So like I said, this is like a screw. It's got threads on the top. You see it here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to thread it all the way down. All right, you can see I'm rocking the car and there's no fuel coming out of here or there's no fuel slosh around at the bottom of the window. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna turn the base of this nut right here, counterclockwise to raise it, because imagine you just wanna unthread it. And then I'm gonna lock it back down so that I don't get fuel splashed all over me. And then I'm gonna test it. So I gotta turn the fuel pump back on. Okay, see now, I turned it too high. Now it's too high. It's difficult to get that to go away. So what you've got to do in order to get that to go away now is you have to remove one of the screws at the bottom to drain the bowl. And then you've got to basically start back over again. So I'm gonna drain the, the fuel bowl and then I'll start back over to show you exactly what we're doing. 
All right, so we want to turn our fuel pump on and we want to see where the level comes up to. All right, so I worked my way back, backwards, uh, unscrewing my nut here, my adjustment nut, until uh, I basically got the float height right at the bottom of the window there. So unfortunately the battery died, so I didn't get that, but that's what happened. So now we're in spec. All right, I'm gonna explain this now because I don't know if you're gonna hear me when I start it up. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to do the um, idle mixture screws again. And now we wanna make sure we really get them dialed in. So the way to do that is the idle mixture screw is going to be turned until you get the highest vacuum reading that you can possibly get without going back down. So basically, let me put this down. There's, it's like a mountain. You're gonna either add or remove, remove fuel until it goes up and up and up, and it's gonna get to a maximum, what's called stoichiometric or stoichiometric, and then it's gonna start going back down. You wanna be on the top of that mountain. Anywhere on the lower part of the mountain, it's not running as efficiently as it can be. So that's what we wanna do is get it right at the top of that mountain. And we have four corner idling, so we have to do that four times. Hooray. Uh, once we have a, a good steady vacuum, highest vacuum on all four, then we can move on to another measurement and I'll talk about that when we get to it. So this is a Holly carburetor. Well, it's like a knockoff Holly. So there's a couple of ways you could uh, uh, plug this thing in. We have a port down there we're gonna use. I already uncapped it, but there's two down there and there's one back here. Whatever you do when you do a vacuum reading for this, don't use this one. This is ported vacuum. That's gonna to go to your vacuum can back here. Don't use this. This is this vacuum. This is actually vacuum in reverse. Um, you get vacuum when you accelerate and, you, and there's nothing there when you're at idle, idle. So use one of these down here. We're gonna plug the vacuum in there, vacuum gauge in there, and we'll start adjusting. All right, guys, well, sometimes you just got to admit when you're wrong. Well, I did a little bit of homework because I don't know these brawler carburetors like the back of my hand. You know, I know the Holly's a little bit better. It's kind of a knockoff of a Holly. Anyway, the port that I was using for the vacuum was a timed port. So I remember I told you about this port. Well, the port I was using down here is the exact same thing. There's another 3 8 back there and a 3 8 back there. All right, we're sitting at about 17 inches of mercury. I'm going to turn the screw counterclockwise to rich in it. I seem to like it a little bit. I'm going to go to uh, the next corner, the next screw. All right, I've got a rich in it by turning it counterclockwise. really didn't make any effect. If anything, it made it slightly worse. So I'm going to turn it back in about a quarter turn to where it was. I kind of seems to reset it and put it back where it was beforehand. So I'm going to leave that one alone. That one's probably okay. All right, well, we were actually pretty much in the ballpark. All right, now I only did two of them. Uh, because I did the other two already. I just wanted to do a little demonstration of the effects that the screws have on your idle, or excuse me, your vacuum. Um, it might have been tough to see on the video because it's kind of bouncing around a little bit, but it's basically a game of playing with the, the mixture and trying to get it to the highest reading. Um, we saw that we turned one screw and it raised up a little bit. If anything, it really kind of more evened it out than it did uh, kind of raise it, um, which means the engine liked it. And then when we started playing with the other screw, this back screw here, uh, the engine seemed to kind of not like being any richer on that. So that, uh, when I turned it back, it seemed to kind of um, even out a little bit, which means it probably was about right anyway. So our inch and a, excuse me, our one and one half turns was probably pretty accurate um, right off the jump. So that's why you do it. Um, I'm gonna show you one more thing. Uh, 
and then I'm just gonna explain some other stuff that uh, you might get into in advanced tuning. All right, well now that we have our idle mixture screws set, we have a vacuum reading. And that vacuum reading is important because it's going to give us a measurement for something that I'm not gonna show you today, but I am gonna explain, which is a power valve. And the power valve is basically, you take whatever your engine vacuum is, um, in gear, if it's an automatic or in neutral, uh, if it's a stick, you divide it in half and then that's your power valve. Your power valve is basically going open when uh, the vacuum in the engine drops below that designated number. So for our, our engine here, it was 17, between 15 and 17, kind of bouncing around. So 17, let's just make it 16 for an easy, easy math. 16 divided by two is eight. They don't sell whole numbers. Everything is a half number. So we would have, uh, we would want a seven and a half power valve. Uh, these carburetors mostly come with a six and a half. That's fine. Six and a half is fine. So uh, that explains our power valve system. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna show you that because it's a little bit more advanced and that's not what we're doing here, so. All right, the last thing I'm actually gonna demonstrate is uh, measuring for squirters. And you don't really actually measure for the squirter size. You kind of more experiment with the squirter size to try to get it right. Now the squirters are the part of the uh, acceleration system uh, the accelerator pump system and what they do is when you quick hit the throttle what they do is they give you a quick burst of fuel to transition you from one circuit to the next circuit say the idle circuit to the power circuit um so just quick burst of fuel so i'll show you when i hit the throttle you can see that fuel shoot out here that's a squirter there's one on the front and one on the back Okay, so just a very quick demonstration, but you saw how it stumbled. It didn't just accelerate. When I blipped the throttle, it was like, huh, huh. you know, it's what it sounded like. Um, so it doesn't have enough fuel. Um, usually that's what you have. The problem is, is that you got to go up in squirter. It's not usually down in squirter size. Um, this has a 31 in it. I'm going to throw 35s in it because that's what I have. And we're going to see what's up. So... Let me do that and then uh, I'll bring it back. Well, I pulled the squirter out uh, of the bag and I figured it would be nice to show you. This is the squirter and you see that little orifice, that's what the 35 is, 35 thousands. Um, and this is all it is. It's literally a thing with two nozzles on it and it just shoots the fuel out. So the other ones that are in the car that are coming out, those, have, those are 31 thousands and they just come out with a Phillips head screwdriver. I'll show you. So my Phillips head is in the toolbox, so I'm gonna take it out with a flathead because that also works. The main thing with these people, if I can stress to you enough, there's a gasket. See how little that thing is? Underneath, there's a gasket on top and underneath of these squirters. So the squirter gets mounted in with a screw. There's the screw, screw, Gasket on top of the screw, I don't know if you can see it, then the squirter, and then a gasket on the bottom of the squirter. So it's a, uh, make sure it's sealed up, so don't forget that. Also, now's a good time to explain when you put these in, make sure they're pointing where you want them to point. There's like a little bit of wiggle room that they turn, so you want to kind of make, it, make sure it's in the middle of that turnability, because it'll be aimed wrong if it's not. All right, let's bolt the squirters changed. Let's try it out now. Okay, this is what I mean about uh, trial and error here. Uh, put 35s in it and it's still kind of small. Uh, probably a 37 would do it. I don't have a 37. But um, for the purposes of doing the demonstration, you get it. Because 
it was visual. You could see the 31 bogged a lot, the 35 bogged a little bit. Um, a 37 would probably be just right. Um, the other things that you can mess with, which I'm not going to demonstrate, would be accelerated cams, uh, which is basically changing the timing of when that squirter is going to squirt. Um, uh, power valve tuning, and basically the power valve is, you know, it's a little bit advanced tuning, but it's it's easy. Um, but for the, the basic, you know, uh, hot rod in your garage, you're just going to use what's in the carburetor for the most part. Anyway... Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you gained some value out of this. Maybe it gives you a little bit of an idea how to tune your carburetor, um, you know, for you weekend warriors, guys, uh, DIY guys. Um, if you did in, enjoy the video and get some value out of it, I would really uh, be appreciative if you guys could subscribe to the channel so you guys can see more content, um, you know. Uh, throw a comment down below. Let me know if you want me to do a video on something else. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.